Hello everyone, my name is Hisham. I'm the owner of Clemson Aeronautics. We make the riveting and dimpling systems for the experimental aircraft market. And um, to order our uh, riveting and dimpling system, you just have to go to our website and choose which one uh, you like and then give me a call on my cell phone and uh, we have all the parts made for these systems so when you call us we'll put these parts together and box them up and uh, ship them right to you today is the second video of building the rudder of our RV14A and uh, I just wanted to mention something before I continue. Uh, I have mentioned the use of the caliper before and how uh, accurate you can get and how much easier uh, it will be to use the calipers. And I mentioned the Harbor Freight Aerospace <laughs> calipers. And, uh, and I mentioned that I already have one myself. This is the one that I got from the professional uh, machine shop supplier. And uh, just to demonstrate it, this is a, uh, a drill bit, a number 30 drill bit. And usually the, the shank is a little smaller. So you can see it's 127,000. Now, if we get the Harbor Freight one and do the same thing, let's check this out. 127,000. Let's try another drill bit. Here is my TTC. And that I believe is 124,000. Let's check the Harbor Freight Aerospace one. I believe it's also 124,000. And 24 and a half, half a thousand's difference. I think that is acceptable. So, it's a good tool. 10, 15 dollars. I suggest that you buy one if you can. Um, it will help you in your build. Today is the second video of building the rudder of our RV14A and uh, I just wanted to mention something before I continue. Uh, I have mentioned the use of the caliper before and how uh, accurate you can get and how much easier uh, it will be to use the calipers. And I mentioned the Harbor Freight Aerospace <laughs> calipers. And, uh, and I mentioned that I already have one myself. This is the one that I got from the professional uh, machine shop supplier. And uh, just to demonstrate it, this is a, uh, a drill bit, a number 30 drill bit. And usually the, the shank is a little smaller. So you can see it's 127,000. Now, if we get the Harbor Freight one and do the same thing, let's check this out. 127,000. Let's try another drill bit. Here is my TTC. And that I believe is 124,000. Let's check the Harbor Freight Aerospace one. I believe it's also 124,000. And 24 and a half, half a thousand's difference. I think that is acceptable. So, it's a good tool. 10, 15 dollars. I 
suggest that you buy one if you can. Um, it will help you in your build. Continuing with our uh, rudder build, uh, on page 7-4, uh, the first thing uh, is to trim the top of the flange on the right rudder skin and take 3 30 seconds of an inch off of it because it overlaps actually it underlaps with the left skin so the right skin goes from the inside and there is a um, fillet or a radius there so the tip of the right skin is going to be in the radius and, and, and it's not going to be good so we need this area where they meet to be flat so we need to take three 30 seconds off of that and that comes up to 93.7 thousand so like zero nine three seven five so uh, the easiest way I'm gonna do it uh, I will just mark 90,000 on my caliper and what I'm gonna do the caliper have a little screw here when I tighten that screw it holds that so now it's set at 90,000 now I'll get set up and we'll go and make the mark on the rudder skin and then mark it with the marker see if we can cut that out Okay, I have my caliper set to 90 thousandths, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to hang the top jaw on the edge, and I'm just going to run it across the top to scratch the plastic covering. And it made a mark for me on the plastic, that way I can take my marker and put my ruler on there see if I can get some light uh, I can see it clearly now then I am going to mark that and my blue mark is right on my mark so now all I had to do is cut that part off and deburr it and the way I'm gonna do it I I do have the snap-on uh, cutters uh, I and this is the one the yellow is for a straight cut I bought that craftsman one and I like it pretty good I want to see if I can make a cut with that and it would come out uh, clean. I think I'm going to leave it at that and it did not really make a lip or bend the material anything so I think this is uh, this tool worked out better for me I just have to have better lighting and be more accurate with my cut the next step is to just take that small part out of the left skin of the rudder so I'm gonna go ahead and do that it doesn't really need a line I'm just gonna get a little close here and took it right off one of the tools that's kind of unique uh, is the edge forming tool and um, Vans actually suggest that you can use that but it mentioned it as the last tool 
and they advised to try to use it and set it up on a separate piece of aluminum <laughs> before you try it on your actual aircraft. And that's exactly what I did. I used it on this sheet here. And what essentially does, it bends the tip of this sheet down. So when you have two pieces that's overlapping together, this would be touching all the way. And because if they are both flats after riveting, you can find the outside one tilted up like that. It would look not very professional and not very nice. So you need it to be like that with that curve or that little bend so it would lay down flat. And it does make a lot of difference. So having said that and uh, I set up my tool here and I'm gonna go ahead and try it again. Okay, I didn't set it up enough. So I'm gonna get the, the jaws a little closer to each other. And actually, that did the trick. Okay, I put protective tape uh, on the inside because I had taken the original tape off and I left the uh, factory blue covering on. And let's see if we can uh, carefully manage to do this. It did just a little bit, but I think I need just a little bit more. not be good enough. Have to try that. It does lay down pretty good, but I think it needs a little bit more. This might be a little bit too much. Okay, now I could see it. And I'm going to take the cover off. And see what I got. Actually, it worked out very nice. Not too much. And let's try this on this sheet of metal here. Let's see how it does. If there was three rivets here, it looks pretty good.
So um, now all we have to do is uh, final drill, and you can only hold it with uh, one Clico. So you have to line up the holes pretty good, and just I'm gonna run it in real quick in here. Then after that, we'll work on the uh, this rib and the counterbalance and do some stuff here, match drilling and so forth. Uh, working with the lead is different than aluminum and steel. Lead is very gummy and it tends to grab a drill when you uh, when you drill on it. So. Uh, and it's not perfect here I have to knock this high top off first so it would lay down flat in there uh, I think I will start on that tomorrow we'll close it up for the week and I hope you guys had a great weekend thanks for watching we'll see you next time